This is where Prometheus was chained to a rock after he stole fire from Zeus from mankind. Here, on the roof, the appearance of St. George took place. Even worms have their spirits. So do chickens, and women, and young girls. The history of the diggers dates back to the times of Scythian and Sarmatian tribes roaming from the Don to the Danube. In the 3rd century AD, they were swept by the barbarian invasions. Only the ancient islands managed to build a powerful state in the Caucasus Piedmont. The modern accessions are direct descendants of the ancient islands. They are divided into two ethnic groups, the Irons and the Diggers. According to the 2010 census, only 223 people called themselves the Diggers. Do you know what herb it is? It's called Gangali. You can bend it like this, peel it, and eat. During the famine, they used to eat it. Try it. Tsarak Tabeyev lives in the city of Dagora, situated in the north of Sesha. Earlier, the city was known as Valno Kristianovskaya village. Taboyev is a local celebrity, expert in customs, poet, and the wisest man in his quarter. Sarak is finishing a book on his land. What planet these? These? My grandpa. The other ones? Me. Sarak and his grandson Seroja live in a valley. 80 kilometers from Sevir de Gor Ravine. Tomorrow, we are going to the mountains, to the place where our people came from. We're going to travel far, but you'll see how our ancestors lived. Do you want to come? Your grandpa will take you with him. Oh, Golden Alordi, my family is setting off on a very long journey. We ask you to return them home safe and sound. We trust our children to you. Don't let them come down with sickness. If we're guilty, please forgive us. Today, Sarak's family, along with other diggers, celebrate a big holiday of a creature called Alordi. Quite an unordinary holiday. If Alordi looks at you, then you fall ill. Mostly you get smallpox. Many people died from it. All inspiring Alordi holds a specific place among numerous digger gods and ghosts. Paganism and Christianity that came here in the early Middle Ages merged. The modern theories on the etymology of Alordi's name are ambiguous. It comes from the Georgian Alaverdi, a place in Georgia. There's a temple of John the Baptist there. He used to save children. But John the Baptist is a good-looking, bearded, and handsome man. Right? And Alawardi is scary.
Nobody knows what Alaordi looks like, as the diggers don't picture their ghosts. One thing we know for sure, Alaordi is dangerous, and the diggers do their best cajoling him. Women start this day with baking sacred pies. We do it early in the morning, when there's dew on the grass. We use cheese to bake three pies. In 1937, the Digger language was declared anti-revolutionary and banned. Since then, the Iran dialect of the ascetic language, the most common, has been used in schools. Compared to the Iran, the Digger is more ancient and much closer to the language of the ancient Alans. A Digger can read ancient texts which an Iran can't. Debates on status of the Digger language take place today. Thousands of years ago, the Digger language used to be widely spoken. So, how dare you call it a dialect today? A dialect can become a language, but not the other way around. A language either lives or dies. And a language lives while at least two people speak it. While two women are kneading dough, men are in the yard of Sadak's house. It's Children's Day in the rest of the world, but here they drink to the severe Aluardi, washing it down with milk. Hail Aluardi, you dreadful ghost. We ask you to hide your face from our miners. We pray to you as our fathers did. May you help us. Try it. All right? On big holidays, the diggers sacrifice animals. Every household does their best. Someone prepared a turkey, someone a sheep, someone even an ox. It depends on income. Sadak's house chose a ram as a sacrifice. This is the sacrifice we're making for Alaordi today. Save our children from illnesses. May all the spirits help. Hear us, Alaordi. They're burning hair on the forehead of the sacrificial ram. The sacred smoke will fly up to the Supreme God and he will accept the sacrifice. Noon is approaching and processions of worshippers are gathering in the grove sacred to the diggers. Men don't participate. Alawardi is mostly a women's and children's holiday. We celebrate all Christian holidays. All my children are baptized. My parents and ancestors were Christian. But at, at the same time, we don't forget our gods. Each family makes three circles around the sacred tree of Alawardi, praying and leaving sacrifices. Apart from pies, this is milk, sour cream, meat, cotton, and ribbons. Alawardi's bloodthirsting heart needs to be softened. We worship Alawardi, and we trust him with our children. The modest supper is only the beginning. Today, all people in Dagora are going to go on street and sit together at one table. Every year, we give a feast on every street. The most respected guests are received according to the digger etiquette. Hello. Today, we're having a big holiday. Everybody's praying. May God answer our prayers. 
Amen. Since we're in the Caucasus, the diggers can dance. Traditionally, women's applause accompanies the dance. Soon, the dancing starts to spread to the other guests. News travels fast in Little Dagora. People at the ceremony heard that Sarak and his grandson are going to the mountains. Sarak, you're going to travel far. We wish you luck. May St. George, patron of travelers, save you. Amen. Do you have a friend? Yes. Me too. From childhood. I'll introduce you to him. They don't have such a garden as here. They don't even have wood. It's early in the morning and Sarak and Saroja are about to hit the road. Despite a great feast and bestowed honors, women keep worrying. It's the first time Saroja is going that high up to the mountains. Tara can't stand pressure difference. Tara's friend is Kim, Kim Kibizov. He's been living on the edge of the Digor Ravine in Dunta village for all his life. He used to work as a driver, he built a home and brought up his children. He owns his land like any peasant, with one exception. It's very hard to survive in these places because soil is very poor. All Kim's neighbors have moved to the valley where it's easier to live. Here in the mountains, Kim grew up together with Sarak, who used to visit his great-grandfather. Kim and Sarak haven't seen each other for 10 years now, separated by distance and routine. Long time no see, Sarak, today, this is a serious man. He's done a lot of good things. Until the 18th century, the diggers couldn't move to the valley with its fertile lands. They were locked in the mountains. They didn't have a right to move. They belonged to Kabardian princes. The czars did us a favor. Degoria was one of the first regions in the North Caucasus to join the Russian Empire in the 18th century. Liberated from Kabardian princes, the diggers from the ravine started moving to the valley where their ancestors once lived. If not, for this decree, we'd live in mountains and there'd be very few of us because it's very hard to live in the mountains. Two villages were founded in 1852 on the flatland before the Degor Ravine, Volno Kristianovskaya and Volno Magomitanskaya. The first one for Christians and the other for diggers converted to Islam during the Kabardian rule. Now they're called Degora and Chikola. One more part of the diggers didn't want to move to the valley and stayed in the mountains. The Caucasus peaks are getting closer now. The road starts meandering. St. George welcomes travelers at the entrance to the Digor Ravine. After God, there's no such saint as St. George for the diggers. 
His name is Wasgirgi and Digor. At every table you can hear prayers to him. Uwas Girgi, patron of warriors and travelers, is an exceptionally male saint. Women are not allowed inside these sanctuaries. The Nar Sagas mentions Saint George and the sagas about him are older than what Christianity says about him. In the local epos, a young man killing a serpent turned into a powerful bearded hero flying a three-legged horse. It's related to the three-legged sacrificial table and pies with three corners. Even numbers are associated with bad luck in the local rituals. A legend blames Tamerlane for the tragic fate of the diggers' ancestors. The great conqueror met a troop of bellicose Alan girls. They were marching and saw the Alan girls with musical instruments dressed up. Of course, they jumped off their horses and ran to them. But the girls put their musical instruments aside, took arrows, and killed them all. Then Tamerlan said, destroy all the Alans, from children to the old. In the beginning of the 14th century, the Alans did fight against Tamerlane. Their opposition nearly led to the Alans' complete extermination. A simple woman from Zadalesk village collected orphans who survived the invasion and breastfed them in a cave. Legendary Nana, which is mother in Digor, is worshipped all around the Caucasus. Just imagine, there were dozens of children of different ages here. And when she left, she used to cover the entrance with branches so that the enemy couldn't see. That's where the Degors came from. Children then moved to a bigger cave that was higher up in the hill. It's hard to count how many sacrificial animals have been eaten here by them and their successors. What we know is that the people survived. I'm waiting. God knows I am. I'd like him to spend here however long he can. A month, maybe two, maybe a year. Kim is preparing for the encounter while Sarak and Saroja are slowly going up. 78 years. My children support me, so I want to do something more. Not only are Sarak and Kim childhood friends, Kim lives in the place where Sarak's clan came from. Kim is a guardian of history. Kim living here means that these places still have a master. The most important thing is that there's a negative attitude to this place. Now, we have everything. We have pastures, we have what to stock up and what to plant, but there's nobody here. Kim's solitary thoughts are interrupted by Sadak's car. It hardly clears the last obstacle. Sadak, Sadak, how are you? Hello, boy. Come here. Welcome the guest. Taira, let me hug you, darling. The first toast is to thank God for the long-awaited encounter. He mentions the role of Sadak's clan in the history of these places. Once, 
Our enemies came here and laid a tribute on us. Your clan saved us. Traditional pies are served here as well. Saroja likes it the most. Here you go. Wow. Did Sarak teach you? Sarak and Saroja find household objects of the older generations in one of the houses. The cauldron chain was transferred by succession. And this one was used to boil a ram in beer. It took a long time to get rich and groggy broth. It's impossible to observe the place without referring to mysterious details. Look, it's where water is running from. It's so clear that you can wash yourself without soap. In the old times, women used to wash clothes there, but suddenly skies turned black in the middle of the day and a whirlwind took a girl to the sky. And when she was taken up to the skies, her last words were, tell all the boy of family to live together and forgive each other. Finally, the granddad and the grandson arrive to the destination of their journey. Saroja, this is the most sacred place for us. Here was the house of our ancestors and their ancestors. It was tall and sound. Many years ago, we moved from here to the valley. There will be a lot of gratitude, village meetings, toasts, and wishes. There'll be a lot of stories and legends to tell. Saroja is full of impressions and seems to fall asleep. His granddad wants to tell a tale of the hero Saslan. Sirgo, Sirgo you my little dear. Narts were strong people. But the strongest among them was the hero Saslan. Once he took part in a campaign. It was winter and he had nothing to feed the cattle. He met a giant on the road. His name was Mukara. So Slan came up to his house and put a pole inside. Like a bolt from the blue, a sword appeared and chopped the pole. Then Saslan took the magic sword and cut off the giant's head. Sleep, my darling. Siroja will not hear the end of the story. He's sleeping and dreaming of Narts, Scythians, Alans, battles, and adventures. Tomorrow, he's going back home to the valley. The old men have a lot of things to discuss. Do you remember our thresher? There were hungry years after the war, and workers gave us a handful of grain. We shoved it in our pockets, ran back home, and fried it. It was so good. Remember? Yeah, it was hard. What's even more important for Sarak and Kim is to have a moment of silence together, for not only friendship unites them, but also a common grief. Each of them lost two children. Only fathers who lost their children can understand each other in the silence of mountains. Tomorrow they'll part. God knows for how long. Kim will stay here and guard this land. Sarak will go back home to finish his book. Baba. 
Grandpa, look how beautiful it is. Can I propose a toast too? Sure you can. Bellicose nomadic Scythians are part of history now, as well as the Sarmatians and the Alan Kingdom. Kabardian princes and the Russian Empire, it's all gone. But the Digor language still lives on, despite bans of the Stalin times and official oblivion. Truth that sounds like a fantasy, and a fantasy you can't help believing in, will be spoken in this language. Fairy tales too. One day, Siroja will tell those tales to his grandchildren before bedtime in Digor.